Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video on my channel here, Licious. I hope all of you guys have been doing well. If you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you guys are updated on my second hair transplant journey progress, as well as video topics covering current hair loss treatments in the pipeline. Take a look at my website, hairliciousy.com, to follow my current hair loss treatment regimen, which includes finasteride, micro needling and derm rolling, my DHT blocking shampoo and serum, low level laser therapy caps, and a few other products that can help aid with hair growth. So before I get started, as you guys can tell from from this video I actually just got a haircut today um, if you guys are actually in the northern Virginia area especially in Manassas there is a really good barber that I go to called blue chip barbers and the person that cut my hair her name is Ruby and she's also Korean and as you guys can see I just wanted to share with you guys my results I'll probably do an update on my second hair transplant progress tomorrow or in the next couple days but I just want to show you guys how nicely, you know, the new hairline frames the face. And I just love how these temporal points right here just extend out and give me that masculine look. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of my current hair and also this haircut here. Okay, so in today's video, I actually wanted to talk more about topical finasteride and how you guys can actually easily make your very own topical finasteride at home. As you guys know, the only two FDA approved hair loss treatments in the US is minoxidil and finasteride. There's a lot of hype when it comes to hair stem cell replication and other companies in the pipeline that are looking for better treatments. But the only effective treatment currently that is approved in the US is finasteride and minoxidil. And as you guys know, the main cause of genetic hair loss is due to our sensitivity to DHT. Our bodies have the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which converts testosterone into DHT and causes miniaturization by binding to receptors in the hair follicles. And with finasteride, one milligram oral tablet, studies show that over 60% of scalp DHT was lowered and also over 70% serum DHT levels were inhibited. And while one milligram of oral finasteride is effective in halting or at least slowing down further hair loss in the majority of men who are taking it. Um, there are going to be a small number of people that are going to experience various side effects. Most of these side effects pertain to sexual dysfunction, low libido, uh, you know, brain fog, depression, and a lot of that is contributed because we are altering our hormones with finasteride. Um, but finasteride, you know, it does go systemic, also affects, you know, serum DHT levels. And like I said, it also alters our hormones. Uh, so some people, unfortunately, are going to not be good candidates for taking oral finasteride. Other people are simply afraid of the possible side effects finasteride can bring and are looking for alternate solutions that are going to lower and limit the possible side effects. And for those who don't know, I started taking finasteride a couple months back after finding out that my wife was pregnant. I'm having a daughter in uh, end of either August or September. So I'm super excited. The wife right now, she's at 13 weeks pregnant. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things just going in my mind. Um, you know, am I going to be a good father? You know, am I going to be able to provide and everything like that? But pretty exciting. But yeah, a uh, couple months back, I got back on finasteride after finding out that my wife was pregnant. And over the past few years of being on and off, you know, off of finasteride. I had no side effects, you know, just in case some of you guys were wondering. I've also talked about, you know, microdosing oral finasteride in a previous video where taking even, you know, 0.25 or even 0.5 milligrams of finasteride and even changing the frequency of taking finasteride can reduce your chances of side effects while also reaping the benefits of blocking DHT. But not everybody is going to be a big fan of oral finasteride, like I said, and for various reasons. And so I wanted to talk about an alternative solution you guys can consider, which would be topical finasteride. Um, a few countries, including you know Canada and I think Germany and Turkey sell topical finasteride, but since it's really not approved in the US, uh, by the FDA, we currently only have the tablet version. The hope for you know topical finasteride is that it's going to deliver the same or somewhat similar 5-alpha reductase inhibiting effects while it limits the side effects. There was actually a study done comparing uh, both oral and topical finasteride with minoxidil 5% where patients were either divided into taking one milligram oral finasteride and 5% minoxidil topical or 5% minoxidil with 0.1% finasteride. The study concluded that over 84% of patients using the topical maintained density and was just as effective as oral finasteride and minoxidil. There was another study that looked into how oral and different strengths of topical finasteride affected DHT levels in the scalp and serum. And as we know, lower levels are required in the blood to reduce the chances of side effects. Two randomized parallel group studies were conducted. Uh, study one, there's 18 men who received one milliliters 
of P3074. They applied it to the scalp once a day or twice a day or one milligram oral tablet for one week. Study two, uh, 32 men received P3074 at the dose of 100, 200, 300, or 400 microliters or the vehicle once daily for one week. And we saw that scalp and serum DHT and serum testosterone were evaluated at baseline and treatment end. And as you guys can tell from this graph, oral finasteride actually had the lowest scalp DHT inhibition. Even a dosage as low as 0.4 milliliters of 0.2275% had better efficacy. Now the important thing to note is that 0.4 milliliters of 0.2275% topical finasteride decreased serum DHT levels by nearly 1.5 times less compared to the oral finasteride serum inhibition which means that the topical is more effective with fewer possible side effects. Switching over to one milliliter, 0.25% topical finasteride would inhibit similar levels of serum DHT as the oral tablet while significantly inhibiting more scalp DHT. So if you guys are taking oral finasteride, switching to one milliliter of 0.25% finasteride topical is going to yield better results theoretically with similar serum DHT inhibition. Now the study was actually done from Polychem's P3074, which is the company's topical finasteride asteroid currently being researched and they're actually expected to be released in Spain late this year or early next year. Uh, I'm gonna be covering this video topic um, probably in the next couple days or next week or so. And so now the easiest way to make topical finasteride is the 0.1% topical finasteride solution since there is exactly one milligram of finasteride in every one milliliter of 0.1% topical finasteride solution. So for a standard 60 milliliter minoxidil solution, you guys are gonna need 60 milligrams of finasteride or 60 um, of the one milligram finasteride tablets. According to the study, if you guys wanted to bump it up to 0.25% topical finasteride solution, you would need 2.5 milligrams of finasteride in every one milliliter to get a 0.25% topical solution. So based on your needs, you can adjust accordingly, but for beginner's sake and to limit our side effects, I will show you guys exactly how to make 0.1% topical solution in 5% minoxidil. So the things that you guys are going to need is 5% minoxidil. This is the one that I get, Kirkland brand. You guys are also going to need 60 one milligram finasteride tablets. The one that I use is with this company here. Um, this company here is, let me see, it's actually called Accord. So this is the one that I get. I take one milligram of finasteride once a day. And then you guys are finally going to need a one pill crusher. This is the pill crusher and tablet cutter that can be purchased on my website. As you guys can see, it can cut the pills depending on dosages. And then also, if you guys open this on the bottom, this is what's known as the pill crusher. You just put in a pill there and then you just grind it up. So make sure to visit hairlicious.com to purchase your pill cutter. Now, this thing here is important because what you want to do is you want to crush the tablet into powder form. Like I said, you want to do this so that you guys can actually dissolve everything into the minoxidil solution when you guys mix it up. Now, a word of caution before I proceed is oral finasteride tablet has a protective film and it should not be crushed near pregnant woman since it can cause issues with the fetus. So if you guys take a look here, this is actually finasteride. Um, once you actually get through into the powder form, make sure that it doesn't come in contact with females. Okay, so instead of using finasteride, um, since I don't want to use a topical version, um, the only reason why I don't use a topical version is because I would have to use this liquid version of minoxidil. I actually use the foam version, which has uh, been really great for me, especially with microneedling, but I'm actually allergic to uh, the, the liquid version. A lot of people are also allergic and I've noticed this because when I put it on my beard area, long time ago when I, when I used to try to grow out my beard, I used to get a lot of like these pimples and scalp irritation, uh, even you know around like the hair transplant area. So this is only for topical finasteride, but I don't use it because of the reason. I'm gonna use this as an example. This is actually iron because I don't wanna waste my finasteride tablets. So what you wanna do is you wanna get 60 of these um, and you can actually divide it up because I don't think 60 would all fit in here but you want to open this up and then you want to go ahead and place this inside. So that's how it looks. And you guys are going to go ahead and just turn this. It's going to grind it up and you want it to go ahead and open it up, you know, shake it up a little bit, grind it up. And what you're trying to do is you want to try to make it into fine powder. Now this tablet also, just like finasteride, is going to have a protective film layer and you want to use some type of um, something so that you guys can actually uh, grab the protective layer, the film, because that's not gonna be able to dissolve. So if you guys take a look here, it's all grounded up and that little red piece right there is the film. So what you guys can do is you guys can get something like 
um, you know, one of these. And then you can go ahead and pick out all of the the protective film right here. So once you do that, you're just gonna have everything in powder form. Okay, so once you've done that for all 60 pills, you guys are gonna have all of the powder, white powder form, and then you want to get your minoxidil 60 or 60 milliliters, you wanna open it up, and then what you wanna do is you want to go ahead and pour all 60 grinded up pills into your minoxidil solution. So once you put it in, you wanna close it off, and then you're gonna go ahead and shake it for 10 minutes so that everything's gonna get dissolved. 2,000 years later. Now the reason why we use minoxidil as a carrier is because it actually has the right solvent to ensure good absorption of topical finasteride. You don't want to use any other type of alcohol as it, you know, as a carrier because what's going to happen is it's actually going to evaporate too quickly and you guys are going to end up with flakes that, you know, flakes of finasteride that are actually never going to be able to dissolve. So once you shake it for 10 minutes straight, you want to go ahead and set it sit overnight before using it once a day on your balding areas. And it's that simple. Um, this is all you need to do to make your very own topical finasteride from home. It's super easy and it's super effective. For those who are wondering why I'm not taking it, it's because of scalp irritation and I don't have any issues when it comes to taking oral finasteride. I don't have any side effects. I don't have any sexual dysfunction and it's been doing a good job in helping me maintain um, you know, the hairs that I have. So hope this video has been helpful guys. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.